if you don't hammer that dent out, what happens next, if you can imagine this being on a bike, Okay, so imagine the dent is like right here on, on this wheel. When you go to put your brakes on, as your wheel slides forward and that dent comes around, it can't get through your brakes. So what happens is it locks your wheel up and where the tire hits the ground, you're going to wear through the tire. Now, sometimes kids like to jam their brakes on anyway and skid, but if you have a dent in your wheel, what's going to happen is you're going to eventually wear through the tire like that. So if you put an inner tube in there, it's going to push right through and blow out on you. So if you have that kind of a skid, look for dents in your wheel. All right, let's see what this one is. Okay, this one looks like it's just a, a simple puncture. It's on the outside, so maybe it was just like a thorn or a piece of glass that went through. But one of the things that I wanted to show you here is, see these lines that are in the inner tube? Those are the fibers that are inside your tire when the tire is constructed. If your inner tube has these lines on it when you pull it out, that's a sign that your tire was underinflated. Over time, that will actually cut through the inner tube and you're going to get a million little pinholes that you can't find but the inner tube is so thin that air literally will push right through it. This one, I'm not even gonna waste any time filling up. This is a blowout. And you can see how the inner tube has shredded, come apart. Um, this is due to overinflation and the tire literally pops off the rim and the inner tube follows suit. Usually it's accompanied with a very loud noise like a shotgun sound. Remember earlier how I was sliding my fingers around the tire and I was also doing a visual inspection to see what I could find in terms of what caused the puncture? Here's some other um, ailments that could inflict and give you a puncture. This tire, if you notice, there's like a parallel wear mark on the tire. And that's from your brake pad being too high. So every time you put the brakes on, instead of the pad hitting just the rim, part of it is riding up and actually rubbing the tire. And over time, it rubs through the tire, giving this type of cut. Um, and your inner tube will eventually push through that and blow out. This one is, okay, tire tools. The tire tool that I like to use, like this, is made from plastic. The reason I use the plastic ones, a lot of wheels are made from aluminum, carbon fiber, and if you use a metal tire tool, you're going to damage the rim. It's always better to damage the inexpensive tire tool that you can easily replace than the expensive wheel. People sometimes, instead of buying the tools, use either a metal tire tool or a butter knife or a spoon or some what they think is a soft rounded piece of metal, but it doesn't have the radius corners that this has. So when you go to take your tire off, it actually shreds the bead. And the characteristic there is that you have these little pieces of rubber that are hanging off and that's because the bead has been damaged every time you put this in. You can see it here also. So eventually, that'll blow out if not um, having been the cause of the puncture to begin with. This one, okay, the reason I have this is, see these X's, these lines that are on the side of the tire forming these X's that go all the way around? What that is is, <clears throat> that's from underinflation. As this tire is rolling, it's compressing, and because you're riding, you're putting like a shear force on it. So the tire, outer edge of the tire is trying to move in relation to this inner edge, and as it moves, it, it gives you these X's. Those X's mean that the fabric of the tire is breaking down. If you see those, this tire has to be replaced. It's going to blow on you. This one is a damaged bead. Tires have metal beads inside here that hold it onto the rim and this bead through overinflation has caused the tire to rip away from the metal bead. So that inner tube that I showed you earlier, a blowout like this, is because when this fabric tore away from that metal bead, it happened quickly 
this inner tube pushed through that opening and the air pressure caused that to blow out. So if you see a separation of bead from tire, that has to be replaced. This tire, um, what you want to do is when you take tires off, you want to give them a little bit of a squeeze. And if you see cracks in the sidewall, or if you squeeze it up here and you see cracks in the tread, it means the tire's dry. The rubber has seen better days. When it dries out like that, the danger is that the rubber isn't going to adequately hold the fiber inside the tire together, and it's going to blow out on you. This tire is just plain worn out. And the way you can ascertain that is you can see that there's a flat section across the top here. A lot of bike tires don't have tread, so it's difficult to figure out when the tire has worn down low enough. So if you see a flat spot, um, it's time. Now, if you ride your bike indoors on a trainer, you're going to get this flat spot because it wears the rear tire prematurely. Maintain air pressure. It'll last a lot longer. Or put an old tire on when you ride indoors in the winter. This tire has a drywall screw. I don't know if you can see it. It went in here, came out there, puncturing the inner tube. So you're going to pull that out. Now, the question becomes, when you have things that go through your tire, when do you have to replace the tire from a cut going through it? Now, that drywall screw is going to leave a small hole. And <clears throat> probably, you will not have to change the tire. But you might have to put a patch inside of it. So the same patch that you would use on your inner tube in an emergency, you can just glue it inside your tire where that cut is. Um, the rule of thumb is that when you're doing your visual check and sliding your hands through, if you do see a cut in the tire, like, like that one right there, with your fingers, if you try pushing it through that cut, if you can see your finger inside the opening, it needs to be patched to get you home, but the tire needs to get replaced. With a cut that's that big, you've damaged enough of the tire that you're going to get a blowout. So once you figure out what's wrong with the tire and what caused your flat, you're going to either patch the inner tube or replace it. So the first thing we're going to show you is replacing the inner tube. What I like to do is get an inner tube and I like to put just a little bit of air in it. Just like that, just so it takes shape. And I like to put it inside the tire first. So you just kind of like work it around with your hands. If you find that like the inner tube isn't really staying where you want it, lay it on the floor and kind of just tuck it in. <clears throat> but I like to get it in like that and I just give it like a little shake to get everything to kind of move around and find its place. Next, you're going to get the valve, insert it so you insert the valve through. Now the part of the tire that's closest to the rim, which is all the way around here, that part of the tire, that bead, is going to get pushed on first. So I like to just use my thumbs and I kind of just like roll the tire over onto the rim. Now you can see that there's, from here to here, the tire is not yet on the rim. And it's pretty tight, like it doesn't really want to pop up. At that point, let a little bit more of the air out. Not all of it, because the tube still has to have a little bit of shape to it. But when you let more air out, you can now, with your thumbs, push the tire on the rim. Once it's on, you can either go back to the valve and start rolling the tire on, or if the tire is really stubborn, start across from the valve and put that part of the tire on first. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm using my palm, resting on the tire, I'm grabbing the back with my fingers, and I'm doing this kind of a motion. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of like pushing and squeezing my hand at the same time. And that combined force is allowing me to push that tire over onto the rim. And then do the same thing over here. Now, this tire, because it's so tight, I finished up with the valve instead of starting at the valve. When inner tubes are made, 
the valve is vulcanized into the tube and there's a thick spot on the rubber. <clears throat> that thick spot prevents the tire from dropping in place. So if that part were down here, the tire wouldn't fall into place and it would be really difficult to stretch it. Not every tire is as tight as this one. If your tire is looser fitting, that doesn't really make any difference where the valve is. Just push the tire on. So we're going to roll this over. Now it's getting pretty tight, so we're going to go back to palm, grab the back of the wheel, squeeze and push, and roll it over. And when it gets down to about you know, that much of the tire with your thumbs, you can just push it over. Now you can kind of see here how the tire is kind of seated, and then right here it's, the tire is sticking up. That's the part of the valve I was telling you about earlier, where it's vulcanized on the inside it's not allowing the tire to drop into place. So if you get the valve and push it inside the tire, you're going to see the tire is going to pop down. See that? It has an even, consistent bead now showing. Next, I like to hold the tire back and kind of just walk it around, making sure that the inner tube is not pinched between the tire and the rim. So I kind of just like walk it around All right, that looks good. If the tube is pinched, you want to use your tire tool, not to pry or anything like that, but you want to just roll the tire back and use this to just kind of push the inner tube very lightly. Don't use any pressure because the tube is very fragile and it will pinch. But you just need something so that you can kind of tuck the tube under the tire where it needs to be. Once the tire is back on, what I like to do next is just push the valve inside the tire. Earlier I mentioned how there's a thick part on the inner tube where the valve is molded into it. If you don't push that inside, the tire can't drop into the rim to seat properly. So I always like to push that in. This needs a valve adapter. If you don't have pressed the valves, you don't need to use an adapter. And then put just a little bit of air. Don't inflate it all the way. Now tires have a line that's molded, it's like, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch above the rim, and it goes all the way around, it goes all the way around your tire. That is a guide to show where your bead is in relation to the rim. And you want to make sure that that line is evenly spaced all the way around. Now if you notice on this tire, you can't see the line from here to here, and you can't see it from here to there. So <clears throat> what that means is that the tire in those sections is too low. If you see too much of that line, that means your tire is ready to pop off the rim. Tires have a bead, and I'm going to exaggerate and say that's what the bead looks like. It's got like a hook. Rims have a similar but opposite shape. When the two are mated like this, that line on the tire is evenly spaced and it's just above the rim all the way around. If the bead is sitting like this, you're not going to see the line because it's, it's dropped inside the rim. Conversely, if the bead is like this, which means your tire is ready to blow off the rim, you can see that too because that line molded into the tire is going to be higher in one spot, meaning it's getting ready to pop off. All right, this one has a couple low spots. So at that point, your options are put more air in it, and hopefully it'll pop it out. And make sure you check both sides when you, when you do that. Okay, so let's try to pop it out with air pressure. All right, you just heard that pop. That was the tire actually coming out. So doing another quick visual check. It's still low in this area. So you could also persuade it to pop out. And you're going to do a kind of a pulling motion like that. You can see that came up now. Same thing there, and that popped up. And then the other side, the other side looks even all the way around. Now just make sure you have the proper air pressure. Yep, there you go, the last little bit popped out. All right, and just do a visual. Make sure that line is even all the way around. When that's finished, tighten your valve down. Put your cap on and you should be good for another ride.